how are you connecting the the creative part of your soul to the the like financially responsible part of your brain Salma, thank you so much for taking some time. I know that this was a bit of a bit of an adventure for you to get out here today. Never take trains in the United <laughs> Kingdom. <laughs> trains are good. We want more trains. Thanks for having me, Jason. I'm so right. happy you're here. So you've been doing this this series of videos, and you built this gorgeous new page for your videos, and the the headline on it is "This Internet Is Ours." What does it mean? to own the internet? And and more specifically, how do we know that we've done it? The internet was about bringing people together. But as time has gone on, it's about people competing with each other for likes and subscribes and Twitch hype trains and numbers, engagement, views. And we've lost the way because now people are making things to satisfy getting the likes and the retweets. That doesn't benefit us, actually. It benefits the platforms who can then make more money. And so when I say the internet is ours, we shouldn't give a shit about that anymore. If we can just go back to creating things from inside us and connecting. I have this complicated relationship with that sort of content because what if the algorithm doesn't like it? What if it throws off the recommendation engine? What if I put this out there and the people who look at me for the other types of content I do they don't like it and then it confuses YouTube and then I don't get my views and then people don't hire me anymore. And I, it's, it's completely shifted my relationship to, you know, versus when I was younger and I, I didn't have a job. I didn't have anybody expecting anything from me. So I would just make whatever silly thing was in my head. That was, that was fine. How much is too much of yourself to put in public? It's funny, I actually experiment with being vulnerable every now and then by saying something and then five minutes later, I think, oh, too much, I'll delete it. <laughs> For the last few years, I've been a personality online. I've been putting on an act, I've been putting on a performance as this person who thought X, Y, Z, believed X, Y, Z. And yet those part, those, that's part of me, but it wasn't like the whole of me. I mean, maybe there is no too much because I think I went pretty far in that two weeks of making videos and no one said a single bad thing about <laughs> it. And everyone said more and everyone said, I love it. Okay, I like what you said about having a persona. Um, Cause I think that's a, tr that's a really easy trap to fall into. And I've definitely fallen into it where I, I start to define what I am to other people. And in, in that I'm trying to understand like, what should I tell, like, how do I tell somebody that they're in the right place? And so it, there's a part of me that's trying to think about it from the, the service to others. But then there's this other part of me that gets the marketing brain going. That's like, okay, well, what's my niche? What's my value prop? And it starts to feel really restrictive and it gets itchy. Like, and then I'm like, well, but what if I cut off a, a part of me that I don't want to lose? And so it has been really nice to be able to just sort of be a whole person and not worry about that. And I have also noticed that people seem to embrace like, doesn't feel like you're being, you know, Jason the character. It feels like mm. you're being Jason the person. You and I, we we both more or less make our living by trying to come up with creative ways to talk to people. How are you connecting the the creative part of your soul to the the like financially responsible part of your brain? It took me a long time to get my head around that if I want to be successful, I have to care and know about the money business stuff. Money matters right now because you want to keep your job. I want to keep my job. So I need to provide value. Monetary value actually is the bottom line. So you have to be even more creative. You can't just think of the best, most artistic creative idea and then do it. You have to work that in to how can I sell this to the people who have the money so they will understand the value it will 
generate. As a creative, artistic person, it makes you feel icky when you have to think about the money, but actually, Capitalism wins everything, as we said before. So it is important to think about in order to have that room to be as creative as you are. Well, I, and I like that framing too of, it's not like ruining the creativity for the sake of the money. It's, it's giving you a constraint. And I used to think it was ruining it. And I, I think I felt that way too. When you, when you realize not just like how to make fun content, but how to make fun content that people want to watch that yes. is is valuable to both the people watching mm -hmm. it and the business paying for it, it does become a creative exercise because I want to make something that, you know, if, if I'm making it for you as a developer, I want you to watch it and say, that was so much fun. I want to watch more of that. I can do that in a lot of ways, most of which aren't super valuable to anybody. So I can self fund that, but most of the time I can't afford it. Then so I got to find a way to be creative in a way that another business is thinking like, oh, we want to be involved in that. We want our name on that. So to me, it's almost become part of the puzzle. It kind of becomes fun, I guess. I don't know. Are you having fun with it yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> the dream is never to work again, isn't it? Right? You want to go off and you want to sit on the beach and drink cocktails and do Sudoku, you know? You know, the dream is to <laughs> stop working and do math. <laughs> I feel like I've sort of watched you through this this fascinating transition in your career. What are you finding this this transformation is is causing for you? I always remember um, sitting in a few meeting sessions with someone who I admired. I always admired their participation style in meetings. They would listen, they would internalize, they wouldn't speak too much. They would offer the most incredible insight. And I've always aimed for that. I feel like I'm getting further towards that. It's like, how can you solve a problem creatively, but taking all of this non-creative nonsense into account that makes people happy? That's almost as creative as the thing you're doing creatively anyway, where I used to think I shouldn't have to care about this because it's nothing to do with my job. Once you start to think, okay, so it has to be part of it. And it seems to have improved my outcomes and the value and the things I can talk about in interviews when I'm trying to get a new job. I used to say that because I needed a villain that was like preventing me from doing the work that I thought I was capable You're of. Right. <laughs> You're like right. Like I needed someone that I could blame. Like I'm not doing work that I think I could do because people won't let me. Yeah. right. When it stopped being like an external villain that I couldn't control, like yeah. businesses don't like fun. And then I realized, I was like, wait, businesses don't like fun that doesn't move metrics. Yes. They actually love fun when it moves metrics because it's notable and it creates community buzz and people want to talk about it. I was like, oh, wait, this is a new game. I'm going to figure out how to win this game. Um, and it was like my whole perspective shifted. I feel like I've made such a valuable shift and had such a valuable set of learnings over just such a short space of time, who knows what I could be capable of. Who knows what it looks like in 15 years because there's, there's so many things that will change that we can't predict right now, but I couldn't predict things that happened 15 years ago. No way that me in, in 2009 would have looked ahead and said, this is what I would be doing today. Oh, absolutely right, yeah. And so part of me is, is just sort of excited to find out where I end up. <laughs> because I, I, what I'm, what I'm learning about myself, and I think what I've seen, kind of a, a similar energy in you, is that that creative energy is is not necessarily for like one thing. It's for having a little bit of fun along the way, and and finding a way to share that. And so today, it's videos. Tomorrow could be holographic entertainment, AR. We all just put on headsets and stare into each other's eyes. I don't, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> What is it that, that drives you? My son. That's all it is. Like, I don't even do it for me, really. I mean, there's a part of me that does it for me, but like everything I do, I do to provide him a better life. Mm. So if I have enough money in my bank account, if work is a great environment and I've got a great manager and I feel safe and I feel free to experiment, I'm not stressed. I can give my child full attention and me being able to engage with him whenever he needs me 
means that he feels safe and secure, not stressed. He thrives at school. So it's a whole knock-on effect. I didn't really have many reasons for living before he was born. I'm a better person because of him. I love that. And you've got a family band now, which is like the coolest thing I've ever seen. I wish I could show you the family band. <laughs> what is what does goal setting look like for you? Like if you're if you're sort of laying out what you want to do or what you want to work on next, how do you build those plans within the the framework of of success? I'm not sure that I believe in goals anymore. Interesting. Okay. I've set myself goals throughout the year, for other years. And whenever I've done it, achieved it, I don't feel anything. Mm. So I think I'm starting to shift towards just being, <laughs> I think, and going in directions and just working on things. What do I want to try? And how do I want that to benefit me? And if it's not benefiting me, then I'm going to stop doing it. Ticking off tasks is more satisfying than achieving a goal for me. Interesting. So, so making progress is, is better than like finishing. Yeah. hundred percent. I like that. And I've only just realized, been able to put that into words. I don't like to say, right, I'm going to build this project and it's going to be X, Y, Z, and it's going to solve X, Y, Z problems and like a course, right? I'm not a course person. The thought of making a course makes me feel pretty like sick because I will put my heart and my soul into this course of however many videos and blog posts. And then when it's done, who am I anymore? Mm. So my preferred way of working is like, okay, I'll make a small little improvement here. And everything is always evolving and changing. So I guess you could call me a tree rather than a solid house structure. Once you build it, it's done. But the tree never stops growing and changing. I get you, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm quite excited because I'm having a revelation right now. What is, what is a good career? A good career is being cited for something that I said to someone casually that stuck with them. Yeah. We cannot change the world, but we can impact individuals right so success i think is individual and personal success is not money success is not likes and subscribes True. actually yeah. because what does that even mean it just means that you're more monetizable and that's disgusting <laughs> don't monetize me <laughs> so it's a good career is something that i can look back on and say like i helped some people and i and i helped them do a good job somehow and that's what I'd eat.